we're going to be looking at standing waves and in particular standing waves in pipes. Here you have an open pipe and at one end of the pipe a tuning fork is vibrating so it's sending out a sound wave and the air inside the pipe is being forced to vibrate. At the other end of the pipe the sound wave is being partially reflected back down the pipe. So you have two progressive waves of the same frequency travelling in opposite directions. So that is the incident sound wave generated from the tuning fork and the reflected sound wave interfering to produce a standing wave inside the pipe. This diagram is showing you the first harmonic for the open pipe. So it's the fundamental note. So the standing wave is vibrating at the fundamental frequency F0. And the rules for harmonics in open pipes is that at the open ends, the air is free to vibrate at maximum amplitude. So we get antinodes. So in order to get antinodes at the open end, there must be a node at the centre. So the length of the pipe represents the distance from one antinode to the next antinode, which is then half a wavelength. This diagram is showing you the second harmonic standing wave. So again, we have antinodes at the open ends, but we've got now an antinode at the centre of the pipe. And so between the antinodes, we have the nodes. So now the length of the pipe is representing a full wavelength. If we compare the wavelength of the second harmonic with that for the first harmonic, where the wavelength is equal to two times the length of the pipe, we can see that the wavelength going to the second harmonic has been halved. And so if we half the wavelength, that must mean that the frequency doubles. So the standing wave for the second harmonic is vibrating at 2 F0. So the standing wave for the third harmonic will be vibrating at 3 times F0. And where the length of the pipe will then equal 1.5 wavelengths and so on for the other harmonics. If we now consider a closed pipe, so that is a pipe that is open one end and closed at the other end and if a sound wave is sent down the pipe then at the closed end the sound wave will be reflected so you'd have the instant wave and the reflected wave interfering to produce a standing wave in the closed pipe. This diagram is showing you the first harmonic for a closed pipe. So the standing wave is vibrating at the fundamental frequency F0. And for closed pipes, the rules for harmonics is that you have antinodes at the open end because the air at the open end is free to vibrate to maximum amplitude. Whereas at the closed end, nodes occur, so you've got permanently zero displacement because the air cannot vibrate at the closed end. And so you can see then the length of this pipe for the first harmonic is equal to the distance from a node to an antinode, so that represents a quarter of a wavelength. This diagram is showing you the standing wave for the second harmonic. So again, following the rules, we have a node at the closed end, 
an anti node at the open end, but we've also got a node and an anti node in the pipe. So now the length of the pipe represents that's half a wavelength and that's a quarter of a wavelength. So the length of the pipe represents three quarters of a wavelength. And if we compare the wavelength for the second harmonic with the first harmonic, you can see for the first harmonic, the wavelength is equal to four times the length of the pipe. Whereas for the second harmonic, we can see the wavelength is equal to four thirds times the length of the pipe. So you can see from going from the first harmonic to the second harmonic that the wavelength, you've got a third of the wavelength. So if you've got a third of the wavelength, that means that you have three times the frequency. So the standing wave for the second harmonic in a closed pipe will be vibrating at a frequency of 3F0. So for the third harmonic in a closed pipe, the standing wave will vibrate at a frequency of 5 times F0. So if you have 5 times the frequency, you'll have a fifth of the wavelength. So the length of the pipe will equal one and a quarter wavelength. It's important to note that a sound wave is a longitudinal wave, so that means the direction of vibrations is parallel in the same direction as the wave is travelling in. And as the sound wave is travelling along the length of the pipe, the direction of the vibrations of the air particles is along the pipe. So these diagrams are showing you for the first two harmonics, the open pipe and the first two harmonics, the closed pipe, the direction of the vibrations. And if we add the standing wave patterns. You can see at this point we are getting the node, so the air particles not vibrating. And at the open ends we're getting maximum amplitude. And it's important also to see that the arrows going upwards could be representing positive amplitude. And so on the other half of the pipe, you can see the arrows are pointing downwards, representing negative amplitude. So you can see the standing wave patterns on the negative side, on the positive side negative side. So this is showing you negative amplitude, so the vibrations are pointing downwards, then positive amplitude where the arrows are pointing upwards but they're increasing in amplitude to the maximum amplitude where we have antinode and then it's decreasing amplitude to the node and then as the arrows are pointing downwards we're getting again negative amplitude. For the closed pipe you can see that the amplitude is increasing upwards so we're getting positive to our maximum value, our maximum amplitude at the open end, our antinode. These diagrams are showing you the first harmonic in the open pipe and in a closed pipe, so at time equals zero, and then half a period, half cycle later, you can see that the pattern has reversed. So the direction of the vibration has reversed. So wind musical instruments rely on standing waves in air columns inside the pipe. And so the longer the pipe length for your musical instrument, the longer the wavelength, and so the lower the fundamental frequency, the lower the note that is being produced. So to set up a standing wave in a closed pipe, we can put a hollow pipe 
with one end inside a cylinder of water. And if we hold a tuning fork and vibrate it above the open end of the pipe, the air column inside this hollow tube pipe will be forced to vibrate and it will send down a sound wave and the sound wave will get reflected at the water surface so you'll have the instant wave and the reflected wave traveling in opposite directions they have the same frequency and they're going to interfere to produce a standing wave and what you can do is you can adjust the height of the air column to lift it up or down for a given frequency of tuning fork until you hear a maximum sound, the greatest sound, which indicate that then that an antinode is occurring at the open end and one of the harmonics is occurring. We can also use this setup to determine the speed of sound in air. So we vibrate a tuning fork of known frequency above the open end of the pipe. And then we'll adjust the pipe length until we obtain the loudest sound. So the minimum length that will give us the loudest sound. And so that will represent the first harmonic occurring in the closed pipe. And so the length of the pipe will equal to a quarter of a wavelength. And so the wavelength will equal four times the length of the pipe. And so as you've got the wavelength and the frequency from the tuning fork, we can work out the speed of sound using the equation V equals S lambda. And finally, you need to know an experiment that demonstrates standing waves using microwaves. So you have a transmitter of microwaves placed some distance from a metal reflector. So the microwaves that are trans transmitted are reflected off the metal plate and so you have the instant wave and the reflected wave of the same frequency traveling in opposite directions interfering to produce a standing wave between the transmitter and the reflector and if you move a microwave receiver probe between the transmitter and the reflector at certain positions, the probe will detect maximum signals representing the antinodes of the standing wave. And between successive maxima, the probe will detect minimum signals representing the nodes of the standing wave.